medical students on the World Malaria Day. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm very happy to inform all of you that, you know, after 2015, when the Honorable Prime Minister pledged to eliminate malaria uh, in India by 2030, uh, today in the morning, in, a, in an event, grand event organized by the National Center for Vector Bond Disease Control and the World Health Organization, the Honorable Health Minister Sri Mansur Mandviyaji also pledged to eliminate malaria in India and um, you know, elevate the fight to succeed in the end game. Essentially, India has reached at a junctional stage where it has another five years to reach zero malaria cases. And um, we were just completing jo the joint monitoring mission visit for malaria program review last week to assess the challenges and uh, strengths, opportunities, uh, weaknesses, and threats for malaria elimination in India. And we found so many of best practices happening, but at the same time, we, we found that there are great opportunities to still intensify the effort and reverse the findings uh, or reverse the history that happened about um, 60 years back when after reaching up to 60,000 odd cases, we failed to eliminate malaria in a country like India. Now we are sitting on top of a reported malaria burden of nearly 150,000 cases. My presentation today focuses on a very specific issue related to malaria elimination. And um, I was earlier talking about um, innovations, policies, and practices with Onirban. And one of the major paradigm shift that elimination requires in contrary to control is the accurate understanding of the malaria burden. So today, as we report 150,000 or maybe 100,000 malaria cases in the country, there are a lot many cases that are happening, that are getting diagnosed in the private sector. There are cases which are happening in weak surveillance areas. We call them surveillance blind spots. And unless we detect those areas and those cases, it is impossible to reach to zero cases. Because zero, to reach zero case, the first thing you need is to confidently state that these many cases you have to manage. So the major challenge that actually impedes that progress is the unavailability of tools to detect and to map malaria case clusters and also enable decision making at the very grassroots level, at the level of district program managers and sub-district level health workers who can then support or who can then intensify and target their efforts at the grassroots. At the same time, another great challenge that we are not focusing on and even in the previous uh, or rather ending malaria strategy or national strategic plan in which we have not addressed is the intersection of climate and malaria. Many of the regions which were earlier free from malaria globally are becoming malaria receptive and malaria endemic simply because of the climate change. At the same time, what climate is climate effect is doing various climate events such as heavy rainfalls, flood, cyclone, and other um, events, they jeopardize service delivery at the grassroots level. But at, at this point of time, despite having improved 
climate level forecasting where we know what would be the rainfall in the next seven days, whether there would be any temperature change, we are still not using the climate information to predict the risk of malaria, the incidence of malaria, and also prepare our grassroots level workforce to adapt to those challenges. With those problem in mind, I have a specific presentation in which I'll talk about a prediction and decision tool that we are currently working on in collaboration with the India Meteorological Department of the Government of India, 